Okay, yeah, it turns out, yeah, it turns out that this was all a lie. Yep. I was really just kind of hoping we could put all this behind us and move on. Is that like, is that an apology? Because it doesn't really sound like one. I know that I called you a grandma killer, but I really just wanted what was best for you. I actually couldn't visit my grandma in the hospital or even attend her funeral, but my heart was in the right place. I also lost my business and my job. I had good intentions and my kids social, mental and physical development was also hurt. Listen, we just didn't know. I knew lots of people knew, but you refused to listen. Instead, you called us names and wished death upon us. Let's just call a truce, okay? But according to your hat, you care about social justice. What does that have to do with anything? Why don't you care about justice here? I don't hear you demanding apologies or reparations. Because that would have to come from me and we just need to move on. So you don't believe in accountability for systemic injustices when you're the one guilty. Can't we just build back and move forward? I don't want to build back a system that allowed this to occur. Don't you want peace? I found this sign on the ground. Maybe you recognize it. It's kind of, I think it's interesting, you know, now that there's this like, you know, amnesty thing with COVID, like trying to just be like, let's just all say we're sorry. And, yeah. you know, like people had to watch their dying loved ones pass on their oh, iPhones God. and yeah. shit. Um, and like, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know. I was already over it. Like my industry, like I, I'm not vaccinated. So I got, you know, I lost tours. I had like a good deal of momentum that was taken out of my last record, which really sucked. But I'm really glad I made the choice I did. And, you know, nobody's, nobody's like, nobody's like knocking on my door to apologize or anything. Not that I need it. Well, it's it was just, just a weird time. Yeah. You know, there's so many people that had such a high level of anxiety already and then COVID came along and that was just overwhelming for them to deal mm -hmm. with this existential threat sure. that you can't control that's everywhere and it's invisible I mean it had all the all the elements that you needed to really freak people out that were oh, already yeah. afraid mm -hmm. and some people just aren't that resilient no they're not you really can see that now yeah. uh I feel like I lost a lot of good guys out there <laughs> not really I don't think you did but but the people that you lost from that it's like they you know come on well you know at at this point i'm amazed at the like snowball of of you know fear and the and the way people were so easily controlled and then you throw in your like freedom of speech and now you can't say you can't talk about it you can't mm -hmm. talk about this this or this without people uh going nuclear on you and yeah. and like getting a whole gang of maniacs who disagree it's like why can't you just disagree yeah you know like it's pretty yeah it's 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 pretty you know orwellian and also um i've been reading a lot of greek mythology lately and it's just like a greek tragedy you know <laughs> like the madness of the gods mm. you know and then like you know covid kind of became this god that made people nuts you know this like an invisible like force. A curse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that um, you know, created a, a cult following. So, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget what the government did and didn't do over the last number of years. I'm not going to forget what the police forces in countries all around the world did to their own citizens. The overreach and tyranny that they participated in because they were just following orders. I'm not going to forget any of that. I'm not going to forget children being ripped out of school, being taken away from their friends and shoved into online classes that were not helpful to them, that damaged them emotionally and psychologically, that they in some ways might never come back from. Kids are resilient, but I'm not sure how resilient. I'm not going to forget the fact that friends of mine, that loved ones of mine, lost their jobs and their businesses because they would not follow totalitarian, crazy regulations and crazy mandates that didn't change anything, that didn't help anything. I'm not going to forget the fact that because of government oversight, 
because governments are not tremendously good oftentimes at responding to emergencies. I didn't get to see my family for three years. I still haven't seen my family, and I'm not the only one. I'm not gonna forget the fact that people couldn't see their loved ones as they were dying in hospital. They couldn't go to cemeteries, couldn't go to their funerals, couldn't say goodbye. I'm never gonna forget any of that. Because if the last number of years has taught us anything, it's that government a lot of the time has no idea what they're doing. And they act without consequence, without repercussion, and you, you are the one who loses out. But they don't care. They don't care and they never will. So I'm not gonna forget. And I hope that you weren't either.